Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is OnePeg. In this video, uh, we have patch notes. Uh, the announcement went out at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The, the patch is ongoing right now. Uh, the servers went down about 7.40 p.m. And we'll be down for about three hours. So we should see everything return back to service around 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, uh, I, or sorry, 10, 1040 Eastern Standard Time. So somewhere around 11 p.m. Eastern Standard which means that when the announcement went out, technically speaking, if it started at 7 p.m. and then they had a 40-minute buffer, it was just just after uh, the, the 1st of February began. So it is what it is. Uh, when this video goes live, uh, I will go back live and uh, I guess we'll do some testing on the, uh, the new changes, especially the Warlock Demon form. Now, we're going to go through the notes there were some things that the community was able to actually get changed in very short in a very short amount of time, uh, thanks to some of the comments and questions that were asked by folks in the community during the dev Q and A that we did just uh, a day ago. So that was really really cool, actually. Um, but without further ado, uh, we will go here, and I will move my uh, my camera up and out of the way. And as always, we've got ourselves. Uh, zoomed in so that people uh, with accessibility needs don't end up having a, having a struggle. And I will get rid of the dono bar because uh, we were able to raise money for a really good friend of mine today that uh, was having a problem paying their bills, which uh, which was great. Chat, uh, for those of you that contributed or you were there for the stream, you guys are amazing. I love y'all. We have the greatest freaking community anywhere. You guys are the best, and I, and I really, really appreciate you. Anyway, uh, fixed an issue where the client could freeze. Players... Fixed an issue where players could detect nearby players when push to talk was enabled. So there was a thing where the icon for push to talk, if you held down your push to talk key and started talking into the microphone, the icon for that push to talk wouldn't actually show on your portrait unless somebody was in range to hear you. So it was a way for you to be able to detect whether or not players were around, which was very interesting. But uh, since, since that uh, has now been fixed, that should no longer be an exploit that people can abuse. Sorry, boys, you'll have to live. Uh, fixed an issue where the goblin mage could fire projectiles through walls, where clothing could obscure the camera when looking down and attacking. So this was especially uh, something that could be seen with robes, especially the frock. If you looked down and tried to attack from, you know, down below you, the, uh, the arm of the frock would start obscuring the camera, so I'm glad that they fixed that. A new warlock skill has been added, Blood Pact. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Perhaps this is a way to be able to heal other people using your own health. If true, that could be really, really cool. A new Warlock spell has been added, Spell Predation. This could also be uh, the ability to steal or, or get rid of buffs from other characters. They did say that they were going to have a debuff mechanic that would be able to be used by Warlocks. Warlocks Demon Armor now has a minus 50 spell casting speed penalty instead of other penalties. So this is interesting. Instead of there being minus healing, or instead of there being... Um, Minus will, they're now going to adjust this and make it so that uh, spells, when they are cast, are now going to be minus 50% spell haste. That seems, again, to be pretty steep. I'm not sure if people are going to bother using plates still because of that change. Uh, this also means that life drain is going to end up taking forever. Uh, anyway, Barbarian's Rage Vigor changed from 15 to 10. So this is interesting. Less of an HP buff when you use Rage. Reckless Attack's defense rating penalty has been changed from minus 55 to minus 35. I don't understand why they're giving Barbarians buffs, but whatever. Savage Roar duration changed from 6 to 8 seconds, and physical damage bonus changed from minus 25 to minus 50%. Okay, so that again is, is a bit interesting. I'm not exactly sure why we're doing this, but okay. Candy Canes and Gingerbread Cookies no longer drop. Nicholas will be leaving soon. So now Candy Canes and Gingerbread Cookies are gone. I would assume that at some point in the next week or so, we will likely end up seeing Valentine be added and we'll end up getting hearts instead. The appearance of silver weapons has been updated. Okay. The presentation of some artifacts has been improved. A new weapon has been added. Club. All right. You want to go clubbing? The crafting item Bone Shaper has been added. New artifacts. Uh, 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 Xerxes Eye, Spellweaver, Illusory, and Delirium. So I assume that all four of these are the uh, artifacts that we're going to see for Wizard, which is good, because we needed those. Some artifacts have been improved. Herbs can now be stacked, so that's good. Zweihander's weapon damage has been reduced by five, so Zweihander no longer as good as it used to be. Drop rate of troll pelts increased, okay? The timing type and number of escape and down portals that appear in solo duos and trio matches no longer are synchronized, 
while the overall amount of skate portals has also been significantly decreased to nudge players to be more aggressive to survive. So now they're trying to force us into PvPing a whole lot more than we used to. Probably the time of being friendly with each other is kind of coming to a close. Um, this is also interesting. We're also going to be, I guess, forced into having to find more static extracts. The max amount of players for a match has also been slightly decreased for each game type. Interesting. The pre-lobby time has been decreased from 3 to 2 minutes. The amount of AP earned from PvP kills has been doubled. So this is the third time now. Third time that the PvP bonuses for AP have been increased by a significant amount. The Dark Swarm always encompasses the whole map at the start of each floor. So now instead of seeing the Dark Swarm suddenly appear, it's kind of always going to be there instead. A new area has been added to the world map, Frost Mountain. Ice Caverns in Area Frost Mountain has been added. Now the Ice Cavern is level 2 of 3 that we're going to be able to eventually play in. So this is going to be like the Crypts level equivalent of, of the Frost Mountain. Uh, the Ice Caverns is going to be B2. New floor rule added, Blizzard. So this is, the Blizzard mechanic is the timer. At some point, the Blizzard is going to make you freeze to death. We're not sure if the Blizzard is going to gradually increase and make it colder over time and start forcing some form of stacking debuff on us or what the mechanic exactly is going to be, but of course we are going to get in there and start looking at it. An early version of the ladder has been added. An extra dark swarm phase has been added to Goblin Cave, so we have one extra circle adjustment instead of what it used to be. Add a special high-value treasure room to the High Roller Goblin Cave. So now there's another high-value treasure room to HR Goblin but we don't yet know how to get into it. I'm assuming that this will be a golden key room, perhaps, because uh, we already have the mystical gem room, um, which is something that we can all access if we get the right map. Uh, but this high-value treasure room is something that looks like it's new. We'll have to hunt around and find it. Modified the amount and location of the sacrificial altars of high roller ruins. Okay, so this is, this is interesting too. So the sacrificial altar is the res altar. High Roller Ruins being modified. We don't know if this is going to be more or less, but I guess we'll find out. Updated the monster composition for High Roller Ruins, including switching out skeletons with wisps or wolves in several modules. So uh, we're going to see more wisps and potentially more wolves than we used to, which again is a good thing because wisp kills and wolf pelts are things that we need for quests and seem to be the things that get spammed the most. Uh, even though the wolf pelt is like a 2% drop rate and I wish that they would buff it, but, you know, whatever. Just so that everyone's on the same page for the math of this, if you wanted to, based on the averages, get the 20 wolf pelts that you needed to be able to complete your quest, that is a thousand wolf kills. So that is a lot. Um, and <laughs> that's something that I think needs to be adjusted. But hopefully we'll be able to get them to do that at some point. Modified several areas of the ruins to make it more difficult for double jump quick traversal in certain modules. So no more wall jumping uh, or as much wall jumping as there was before, which I think is a good idea. Added usable ladders to the Bandit Forest module on the High Roller Ruins. Usable ladders is interesting. Uh, a golem now guards the towers in the ruins. So a lot of things that people used to do was to run up the towers to be able to kind of get away and sit and wait. Uh, if there's a golem uh, underneath the tower or at the top of the tower, that will make for an interesting fight, I think. The drops for the ruins sub-bosses have been improved. Good. They had some pretty crappy drops. High Roller Crypts now have more high-quality chests. Again, W. Season rewards for each adventure rank have been added. This was a question that got asked in the, the Q&A session, if we were going to end up seeing those. Uh, the seasonal rewards being included means that everything other than uh, the Pathfinder rank and below is something now that we'll know about. Uh, we know that they had teased the Demigod rank, for example, is going to give a special skin for the cloak slot, which is good. Merchants provide a rarity filter. Very cool. New emotes. Nightly Kneel, Noob, Praying Hands, and Hand Heart have been added. The player list now only shows the player's status as online or offline. Japanese translation has been, significant, it's been significantly improved. Okay. So, unfortunately, we were unable to finish the new boss encounter for this locale, so we have increased the loot drop from this map, including a large treasure hoard in the very center of the map for the most daring adventurers. Please note this new map is an experimental work in progress, and we will be making lots of improvements based on your feedback. So, it seems like if you guys want some BIS stuff, we go to uh, where the loot is, and that sounds like uh, the, the cavern. Uh, update was also supposed to include a first pass at the marketplace, which allow users to sell items to other places through automated process, but unfortunately, internal testing wasn't completed, leading to some delays. It will be available in the near future. Give them a few days to a week. 
they'll end up having the market in. Unfortunately, no market for this patch. But as I have said in the past, it's always a better idea to have something in these patches that work as opposed to just something that we can stare at and end up having potential exploit issues and whatnot. The last thing that we need is another dupe exploit. I think we all can agree on that. Finally, we notice more teaming in matches, so we're we'll tweaking some settings to nudge players to be a little more aggressive. So this is a, a, an attempt at a workaround because of all the excess teaming. Um, if they're making it so that people have to PvP in order to be able to escape, aside from, say, one or two teams on 3v3 maps, uh, that is going to definitely make for some interesting gameplay. This means that from a strategic standpoint, it would be a best case scenario, best practice for everyone. Secure the circle, get to where the circle is going, and then work out from there. I think that's going to end up being the situation where you're going to rush wherever you believe the circle is going to end up is probably going to be the best idea. We've altered the number of players per match and reworked some of the maps, so early engagements can be done more confidently without interference from third parties. We've also lowered the number of portals, so you will need to eliminate competition in order to ensure your survival. We will continue monitoring behavior and adjust accordingly. Thank you for your patience and support. See you in the dungeons. Okay, so that is, that is, that is the patch notes. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Whatever. Um, this, this looks like overall, again, a W. Although I have a head scratcher moment regarding barbs and why they would give barbs love. No offense to the barb mains out there. When you're playing barbs solo, it seems to be incredibly effective. Uh, barbs in teams with buff ball comps are still very, very good. I don't see why they needed that, but it is what it is. Maybe the devs see something that I don't, or maybe the barb mains in here could, you know, chime in or give me some feedback other than like, you know, W barb, haha, get wrecked or something. Um, although now I expect that will be all of the comments. <laughs> don't let me down, boys. Don't let me down. Uh, anyway, thanks so much for coming and checking this out. Uh, my name again is One Peg. I will be live again as soon as this video is live. If you enjoy this type of content and you want to see more information and news regarding Dark and Darker and other survival games, please consider subbing the channel. That would be really awesome. Otherwise, come and check me out over twitch.tv slash One Peg, and I will see you there. Okay, thanks. Peace.